If there's a bit of social breakdown, um, it doesn't have to be a full economic collapse and everyone, um, you know, goes crazy in the streets or whatever. But just if there's a bit of civil unrest in your area, what what you could wear that can give you uh, protection, uh, not make you stand out, um, but have a really durable element to it. So, depending how long this sort of scenario can last, that your clothing and your gear is going to last over that period as well. So. The way that I'm going to do this video is uh, I'm going to show kind of items of clothing uh, from the ground upwards um, and kind of quickly explain what, why I would pick certain bits of gear. And this is just my thoughts. This is a bit of fun. You know, it's a bit like, almost like the zombie apocalypse sort of idea. Um, but pulling different things together and you know what you could wear in a uh, to be a grey man in the in the city, not look tactical, but have. Uh, all the protection that uh, you could possibly need some, let's say if it was riots, uh, something like that. So uh, let's get started. So uh, here I've got um, some tactical boots. Um, these ones in particular, they're not waterproof and the reason why, uh, the, the way that you waterproof your f uh, feet, I'll uh, talk to you in a minute about it. Um, but um, uh, the reason I like tactical boots, uh, as opposed to say walking boots or trainers, is you've got uh, toe protection, hard toes, and you tend to have hard heels as well. So whether it's simply protecting your feet or it's giving you um, a little bit of protection, let's say if someone stamps on your foot, that's a great way of getting someone away from you, but uh, protecting you if someone tries to stamp on your foot, and let's face it, if, if you're kicking someone, although I wouldn't toe kick them, uh, but um, uh, you know that protection helps. Also with tactical boots, you tend to find the soles are um, uh, give you grip also on wet surfaces like wet concrete, um, wet tarmac, but also on vinyl flooring for example. So, um, first and foremost, that's, uh, that's the sort of gear I would recommend for, for on your feet. Match those, with, you can see these are a bit muggy, they've been through the wash that's since I last wore them. Um, but what's so special about these, well these are waterproof socks. Uh, these ones are the knee length socks. Um, waterproof, pretty durable in my experience, as you can see I've been wearing these out uh, out in the countryside. They really do work, waterproof socks, uh, I think these are seal skins, uh, oh yeah, yep they are seal skins. Hi, right, we turn to, uh, turn to a bit of sport, so you've got your shins, so let's just look at uh, shin protectors. Again, you know, with uh, uh, defensive um, as well as a, a attack, you know, these, uh, these are handy. So, dead easy, obviously you put them on underneath the sock, just roll the sock up over them to hold them in place. So you can see with these, they give you protection all the way up to your knees. So, um, and it's kind of what sort of trousers to wear. I mean, initially I looked at Urban Scenario, it would make sense to have black, um, uh, black military um, uh, style trousers. However, when started researching it a bit more, and looking into it, you've only got to look at what people wear on building sites and things like that, you know, you've got heavy duty work trousers, those guys need um, a lot of pockets for carrying uh, tools and uh, such like in, and they need protection for the jobs that they're doing. So, what I've come across is these, you can see at the front they have pockets which can pop off actually, so you've got all these pockets, so let's say you've got your uh, everyday carry gear, if you're wearing these, you can actually switch it all to these pockets. Now you've got one on each side. Obviously, they're, they're usually for the likes of tape measures and um, uh, you know the tools and such like. But great for your Leatherman, um, your fire starter. I'd probably carry a, um, a lot picking kit in these as well. But uh, you've got you've got put the button and zip off, so you can actually remove them if you want. So you've got the regular pockets underneath. Extremely durable. They're um, uh, they've got all sorts of treatments on these to give them a bit of waterproof protection but they're also uh, from scratch and tear resistant as well. Um, these particular trousers have uh, the built-in knee protection, well 
this, all this here is actually Kevlar. So this is all Kevlar lining. So um, uh, you've got, to, you know, obviously this stuff's known for its uh, stamp proof protection. But obviously for knee pads, it means you're not going to wear your knee pads out in a hurry. And inside, I've actually got some um, uh, flexible knee pads that are made for these trousers actually. That fit. Uh, I would have a, a riggers belt. So uh, this one's a 511 riggers belt. Uh, love these belts. Uh, I've kind of bit converted from leather to these. These are absolutely brilliant. Um, uh, word of warning, uh, if, if you get a riggers belt, make sure you get one with a strong um, metal, uh, uh, whatever you call it, clasp. So the, the, metal, uh, the metal ones are a lot stronger than plastic. I had a plastic uh, one for a uh, buckle for uh, about a week before it snapped. Whereas these metal ones, they really are strong. And these, these riggers belts are designed to, uh, to hold your body weight in an emergency as well. They're not supposed to be used for climbing harnesses full time. Imagine in a, a social breakdown, a bit of a right situation, something like that, you want a bit of body protection if you can. Um, this is actually really lightweight, breathable, high wicking top. Um, uh, that's, I don't know if you can see there, uh, it's from uh, used in rugby, so it's a rugby top. And what you've got is obviously rugby is a, a, a pretty physical game. So you've got built-in padding uh, in the front on the chest, on your shoulders, and also on your bicep, well, actually down, down the outside as well, between your bicep and your tricep. So you've got built-in padding in that, really lightweight. Again, because it's, um, because it's gear for uh, sports, it's really lightweight, really breathable. Um, uh, so what we've got here, again, these are from rugby, um, but these are forearm protectors. So they've got built-in padding, and you can just wear them underneath a, a jumper. And again, they'll protect all the way down your arms. You can see there, so if, you, if you're trying to shield yourself, that's me fun. If you're trying to shield yourself, um, you can use these to, um, to uh, give you a bit of extra protection. A hoodie. Just a, uh, it's a fairly plain black hoodie. Uh, pretty inconspicuous, let's face it. Uh, in an urban scenario these days, you know, the amount of people that are wearing hooded tops, you're not going to stand out wearing a hoodie yourself. However, this one uh, has a bit of a hidden secret. This one is actually Kevlar lined. So I don't know if you can see there, but um, you've got a Kevlar weave right throughout this hoodie, uh, giving you a lot of slash and stab protection. So if you think, you know, wear some of the uh, padding underneath this, um, combined with the, the, um, the protection on your forearms, in a knife attack, you've got protection from the, um, uh, uh, from the impact of a weapon and this would provide uh, pretty good protection uh, from say slashing as well so um, great piece of kit this um, it's a co it's made by a, a company based in London I haven't seen it anywhere else but they were they, they make clothing for um, uh, security services and things like that and they, uh, they use spectra and Kevlar weave uh, patterns in a lot of clothing which looks pretty normal um, uh, to give that added protection and things. And it, you've actually got pockets here as well where you can put tactical torches, pepper spray, things like that in. So you can hide that on your system as well. Something else that they do, oh, the company by the way is called Blade Runner. So, uh, uh, like I say, great company, uh, seem to go, give good service as well. You can also get Blade Runner t shirts, um, short sleeve and long sleeves as well. So, if, if you reside in a city where it's, it's pretty hot weather, um, then instead of going for a uh, you know, full, uh, quite thick hoodie like this, um, you can go for a t-shirt or uh, uh, something a bit lighter but still give yourself an element of slash protection uh, that you get from Kevlar. The other thing is Kevlar is, um, uh, gives a bit of chemical resistance as well as um, uh, flame retardant as well. So it's a pretty versatile uh, uh, type, I, don't, I think it's a thread, a versatile type thread, but material that's really good. Um, they also do these gloves, uh, really nice gloves, uh, thick leather, um, again full Kevlar lining. So if you were to grab a blade uh, tightly with these, in theory that blade shouldn't able to uh, it shouldn't be able to uh, cut through these and, and, and hurt your skin. I'm sure I don't have to go into why wear gloves in an urban scenario because um, you know if you've got to move debris and stuff like that. 
um, then you need some sort of protection to your hands because last thing you want is a cut um, and getting infected in your hand. Pretty easy to do. So these gloves, again, they have a, a thick padding on the on the palm and also on the um, uh, the thumb as well, and it gives a good uh, good grip. I noticed there isn't any on the uh, trigger finger, so uh, you know, obviously you can wear these if, uh, also if you have uh, firearms in other countries. But uh, and warm as well, so good all round glove. The other thing is they've actually got built-in sand in the knuckles. So if you had to go on the offensive and punch, these would help you pack more of a punch um, as well as protecting your knuckles at the same time. Um, from the same company again, um, you've got to think as well, uh, if, if, you know, again, when you hear about people getting stabbed and stuff and you think just there with your jugular vein, it just needs a, didn't need a very deep cut there to um, you know, make you bleed out in a couple of minutes. So um, uh, think of neck protection as well. And this is... Uh, neck protector. It's the same company again, but this one has an even tougher material in it than Kevlar. I think uh, I can't remember what it's called. Maybe Spectra or something. But it is really, really tough. This um, in terms of uh, uh, slash resistance. So, and again, it's um, uh, you wear this. I'm gonna. By the way, I'm gonna put all this on at the end so you can see what it looks like on. But you can just put this. You put this over. You can wear it down around your neck uh, to keep your neck warm. But it provides protection all the way around there or you can bring it up over your nose. You'll actually see it's got a soft bit so you can breathe through it um, better just over your nose and mouth. So even if you needed, um, needed to make sure that you weren't inhaling dust and debris, this would also provide you with protection uh, through that as well. And it's got about three layers in there. So I suppose it could be a bit like wearing a, a surgical mask, I don't know. Anyway, so, uh, we've got up to there, so the last bit is uh, top of your head as well, and what I've got here is uh, obviously a black cap. Um, this one is a hazard 4, it's got the velcro on it, so I can, you've probably seen I've got patches on the uh, torches and stuff like that, so you can just put it straight on and uh, you've got a hands-free torch. Inside, got a bit of a hard hat going on as well, you can get these really cheap. Um, uh, used for building sites, things like that. So it gives a bit of added protection onto the top of your head from a blow or something falling as well. It's not going to give a lot of protection like hard hat, um, but it will provide you with some protection. So I've got that as well. And then obviously uh, in, in an urban scenario, you can see all this gear isn't waterproof so far apart from the socks. So, uh, but in, in an urban environment, you can, you can get shelter a lot easier, you know, in a building or an underpass or whatever. Um, but uh, if you, you know, obviously you do want to carry some if you're caught out. So this, this is where I turn to walking gear. So what I've got in here is a, um, a pack light Gore-Tex jacket in plain black. And I've got pack light um, Gore-Tex trousers. Uh, these are in uh, grey, so these just fit straight over the whole lot as well. Um, they're just plain, uh, the Berghaus gear, so it's good gear. Um, wear these anyway, um, but um, just keeps you protected from wind and rain and elements like that, um, if you really need it in that scenario. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, hopefully, uh, you know, you'd never need this in a, a, in a, a bad scenario. Um, but, you know, I wear this gear anyway for uh, different things, not all at the same time. Uh, but, uh, you know, wherever bits and bobs. Okay, thanks very much.